Greetings, Legionists. Arndelt here. So, going to be doing a model showcase today, but right before we get to that, oh, I have had the concerns of the Primaris Marines replacing regular Space Marines brought up to me again. As, you know, one of the things we were told was that Primaris Marines wouldn't have the same versatility as, you know, Space Marines do. And now we're starting to see them gain greater and greater versatility. Sure, you don't get any mix and matching like a special weapon and a heavy weapon inside of attack, you know, inside of an intercessor squad. But now they can take stock bolt guns, uh, stalker bolt guns, as well as you know their regulation ones. And they're starting to gain a little bit more versatility. So what I'm sort of getting as an impression is that Games Workshop's going to be increasing their versatility as a slowly creeping tide. Because they don't want to scare us into thinking that they're going to be a replacement for Space Marines. Now whether they will be or not, only time will tell. Now, do I think, like, well into the future will they replace Space Marines? Probably. Yeah. However, they cannot ever fully replace Space Marines, because Space Marines, you know, it would be like using Space Marines to replace Imperial Guard, because the, you know, regular Space Marines cost less than Intercessors do. That's just the way it is. They don't cost as much, so they are an effective option to put into certain places. They may be within the same realm and faction as Primera Space Marines, so they're much more links than you would see, you know, Space Marines and Imperial Guard, but regardless, it's a similar comparison, especially when factoring point values and other whatnot. So I do believe that to a certain degree, Primaris Marines are indeed replacing Space Marines and may continue to do so. They will, however, never be fully capable of doing that because they just plain cost more. <sighs> In any case, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, you ever get that feeling that you just want to change something? You get this change from Space Marines to Primary Space Marines and all this other, like, <laughs> <sighs> mm. Well, something feels different. Hmm. Do I look any different? Hmm. Just me, do I feel more of a breeze on my face? Hmm. Who knows? All right, well, let's get to the model showcase. All right, let's go and get this show on the road. So first off, I'm going to show a very scratch-made Primaris uh, lieutenant slash sergeant I had under construction before, which I believe I did showcase. This guy right here. Uh, he, um, yeah, can either run as a uh, sergeant or lieutenant. However, this pistol right here, of course, currently uh, sergeants cannot take those just yet unless it were the sergeant of a blaster squad, the plasma blasters, in which case it can be switched to that, but then I'd have to find a way of being able to switch this arm to uh, have an actual blaster on it. So I currently do not have the necessary bits in which to do that with. Um, the reason why is because this next guy up is the one who's using those. Now, you can definitely tell uh, this guy, you know, definitely looks a lot better made around the legs. And of course, in the previous video, I featured this guy and I explained what I made this dude's legs out of. This guy, however, ours has some legs that I made, like, a while ago. A long while. And they're, uh... This is a bionic leg, of course, very detailed. I really absolutely love it. Let me go ahead and pull up the name of the website I got it from real quick. Let's see. Ah, uh, yes, Anvil Industries. Yeah, I freaking love it. Oh, sigh. Uh, these legs do look absolutely amazing, and due to their size, they easily pass off for, you know, Primaris legs. They're large enough for it. 
And currently I have magnetized a regular bolter to, you know, his arm there. Uh, however, I'm still waiting around until I can actually get extra spare bits of Primaris stuff. That way I can have a more literal bolter for him, a, a Belarius Cowl pattern bolter for him to carry into battle. But the power sword's fragging awesome. I mean, you know, technically it's a nemesis sword, you know, Grey Knight, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it it's a fragging awesome, huge freaking sword. Who's going to argue with that? I mean, it's still going to chop you in half. <sighs> in any case, though, uh, they're completely magnetized on the arms. So I'm able to swap out all weapons. Very thrilled about just, oh, sigh. Oh, magnetizing has never been easier. I remember when I had to carve it out with an X-Acto knife. Ugh. But yes. And the base for this particular Primaris um, Marine was one of the ones that was previously a Mech Warrior base. And I'm like, okay, well, plastic glue doesn't work on these bases, and his legs are made of resin. And it's approximately the right size. And I was just like, perfect! So yeah, yeah, yeah that, that just all worked out in the end. Blah. All right, and then blah. Okay, next up, we have... Oh, big, mean, and not quite so ugly. No, he doesn't quite fit in the picture. <laughs> oh, I didn't factor that in. All right, all right, let's see if I can back this up just a tad so that we can get him fully in the picture. Let, let's see, let's see... No, it's not going to work. Blast it all. Okay, but you get the approximate value. He's huge. He's much bigger than a regular Dreadnought who would be fitting in this picture. And he is essentially a Dreadnought inside of a Dreadnought. Come on. No, no, no. Oh, cooperate with me here. Cooperate with... There you go. Wow. Okay. And as you might have gotten the impression of, I magnetized his torso so that his uh, upper torso can rotate. You know, much like I did with the Imperial Knight. I'll do a video later on covering his magnetizations more in depth so that, you know, y'all can see it. And if you intend to magnetize your own, you might be able to use some of my own ideas for magnetizing him. In any case, the biggest difficulty I had with this guy was making his torso more on the horizontal plane rather than him almost always looking like he's looking up. That got a little annoying. No matter what I did, it seemed like he was always going to be looking up. Which, yeah, as you can imagine, got a little irritating over time. In any case, I currently have magnetized his flamer to underslung underneath this arm. However, the feed going from this slot down to the weapon is more difficult to do due to the fact that, well, he, in order to magnetize it, that's a complication. So I'm still, still figuring out how I'm going to magnetize that. And then, of course, uh, this gun is also magnetized, and because of that, it can rotate sideways like this, which, let's face it, is awesome. You know you want to hug him. Don't lie to yourself. You know you want to hug him. You can hug him later. Okay. So, the last up that we currently got on this list, well, second to last anyways, is someone who has also been featured before. And you might recognize him. Um, he didn't have a head, and I think he might not have had a backpack, I think, the last time I featured this guy. Because he had a bear head, plus his bear head was really small to his body. XL Pudding's not big on changing, you know, out helmets for heads, but even he was like, okay, that, that's that got to be swapped out. And that is what I did. And I gave it, uh, I know it's a little bit difficult to tell, unfortunately, um, due to the current angle. Let me see if I can't get him a little closer. And then fix the... Uh... Focus on the camera. 
You can sort of see the three droplets on his uh, forehead of his helmet. That is, of course, a Blood Angel helmet. But then, of course, you're just like, wait, what about his backpack? Yeah, that is correct. That is a Space Wolf backpack, plus with a Blood Angel Iron Halo. That's because, of course, due to my previous explained Legionist lore, this particular guy uh, commands his company with mostly the tactics of the Space Wolves and the Blood Angels. He is studying them in depth, and he loves their controlled ferocity. And he uses it exponentially on the battlefield. It's just this controlled, feral ferocity that is just so in your face. Um, besides that, however, though, um, some of the details did get a little bit damaged when I uh, used some paint thinner to try and strip them, and it damaged the plastic a little bit. Not too badly, though. Uh, but as you can see by his coat of many colors... I have been attempting to strip him for a while. I just should have used the paint thinner before gluing the backpack and helmet onto him. But they're not too bad. And not to mention, all of that will easily be covered up uh, when he is painted. So, that is the glory of paint. Alright, let's go get that refocus back in. Perfect. Now, last and most certainly not least is a dude I got really bored. I was like, I want to make something, something I haven't made before. And I was just like, voila. And this dude, obviously, as you can tell, is Chaos. XL Pudding gave me a Chaos Heavy Bolter a while back. And I thought to myself, hey, it's about time that I use this thing. And as I was looking, I'm like, what is missing from the front of this thing? And I thought occurred to me, a huge fraggy bayonet. I mean, what's a heavy bolter without a massive bayonet sticking out of the front? That way, when those pesky enemies are getting just a little too close, you can impale them with a freaking power sword sticking out of the front of your heavy bolter. You can't argue with results, can you? Oh, come on. Who argues with results? Anyways, he looks absolutely awesome. Of course, he's not nearly finished yet. Uh, James, of course, will be having to put his own uh, pauldron on. And uh, we're still figuring out what kind of backpack, because Chaos Havocs don't bring giant backpacks filled with ammunition. Apparently, they have such good aim that all they need is that one little belt of ammunition sticking out right there. So, yeah, and not to mention, you never see them, like, one-handing their weapons for a moment as they do something. And I figured that would be a nice change of pace. You know, he's sort of let go of his heavy bolt and he's pointing towards a distant target or objective, that kind of thing. I was just like, yeah, really change up the pace. And XO Pudding loves him, so, you know, all's good. Yeah. <sighs> <clears throat> In any case, what was everybody's opinion on these models? Uh, was there a particular one you liked, disliked, any particular feedback? Please let me know in the comment section below. And yeah, if you are new to the channel and genuinely enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing. And if you did actually enjoy this video, please consider giving the like. If you didn't, please let me know why. And in any case, don't y'all get in too much trouble or do. It's always up to you. Toodles.